wake any business owner up in the middle of the night or if it's after a New Year's Eve party in the middle of the morning and you ask them, what is the most important thing you have to concentrate on? What are they going to say? Cash flow. Absolutely correct. And I believe 100% that especially in the startup stages of your business, you need to concentrate on cash flow. And I always talk about a 12-month forecast, cash flow forecast of your income and your expenses. But I think it's actually even shorter than that. I think you need to know today when your next three sales are coming from. That's how important cash flow is. However, <laughs> however, it's not only about cash flow. And I want to sh share with you a couple of things about cash flow initially. First of all, Mark often says, Cash flow problems is not only about cash flow in, in your business and out of your business. Sometimes there is no cash to flow. Okay, so then you have a sales problem. The second issue around cash flow is very often around you have made the sale and you've delivered the goods or you've provided the service, but your customer hasn't paid you yet. The gentleman in the back has mentioned that already. The third thing about cash flow is the utilization or the use of the money that you have already used. So those are the real issues, I believe, around cash flow. So most of us think that a healthy business is a business that has got good cash flow. Now, unlike human beings, very often a good cash flow is not necessarily, dare I say this, a healthy business. Good cash flow is not necessarily a sign of healthy business. And how do you find out whether you're unhealthy as a human being, as a person? It's pretty easy to see when someone's down. They've got a, a leaking nose or they've got a t temperature. In fact, you know what? Technology is so amazing. A, a client of mine by the name of Siakanda Medical Services have showed me this, this machine. And if you want to see how healthy you are on the outside, all you have to do... Can I push it? Low. It tells me his body temperature is low. Maybe it's the batteries that are low. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this machine can tell you more or less what's happening on the outside of your body. However, a business is a little bit more difficult than that. Because we gauge businesses by perceptions. So there's this perception around a business owner being having lots of money. And cash flow is no problem. And I see a lot of nodding ears. Now, I want to share with you this morning just a couple of other things that will tell you of how healthy your business is. It's not only about the cash flow. And for one moment... I do not want you to not concentrate on cash flow. It is incredibly important. <laughs> but there are other issues around a healthy business. So the first thing I want to say to you today is please, we are all in one of three stages. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to say, well, these are the symptoms. This is probably the prescription that I would prescribe if I was a doctor, and I'm not. Uh, and this is how you do it. Okay, those are the three things I want to share. So... If your business is in the survival mode, and a lot of us are in survival mode, that means you suffer from a lot of stress. Because how am I going to make this month go by? What am I going to do? I need this money, and I need to get an extra sale. So a lot of you and I are going to be in this situation. And guess what? This happens a lot when you're in new phases of your business. You then are of the business that is healthy. You know, you get in the comfort zone. And I want to say to you that I believe this is probably the most dangerous part of a business. Is when you've been in business for maybe three, four, five years. And you're comfortable. And you're not really worried about this next sale. Because you've got the income coming in. And then a the customer moans and you say to your staff, well, you know what? We don't really need that customer. And that's a very dangerous sign. Yeah. You need to be very aware of that. Because that will actually have a long-term effect on your health. That's almost like a cancer if you are in a comfort zone. Now, where we all want to be is in the performing stage where 
the business is independent of yourself. Wouldn't it be nice, ladies and gentlemen, to go on holiday and come back and your business is still running? That would be enormously satisfactory. Not so. So here's the test. Go away for three weeks. If you come back and your business is not there, then you are not in business. Then you are self-employed. That's a big difference. But if you go away for three weeks and you come back and the business is fine, heaven forbid it's better, okay, then you have a business. And that's the stage we want to be at. Not so. You want to be at an independent stage. And we don't know to get there as small business owners. When I started my business, I had no clue 20 years ago what is a good price, what was I allowed to charge. I had no issue. And I have a few uh, qualifications academically, but practically I didn't know what was going on. So today, there are five issues I'd like to share with you. How I would check your business to see if it's healthy or not healthy. And remember, this is another, are there any attorneys in the room? <laughs> Lawyers, legal guys, accountants? There are. Okay, one of these. Okay, there are. Now, with respect, when an attorney says that, that means he actually does not agree with what you've just said. Okay. So if I say, with respect, it means I'm about to disagree with you. And then if I say, um, in my humble opinion, <laughs> doesn't really mean I'm feeling humble. Okay. So there's a lot of ways, I believe, of testing how healthy your business is. But these are the five ways that I think, in my humble opinion, <laughs> with respect, that I would look at. It's your finances, and there's certain internal checks that we can do there to see how healthy your business is, whether it can run independently of you. There's your staff. Obviously, there's going to be your suppliers. There's going to be your customers. And lastly, of course, it's going to be you. So I want to go into five of these issues and just ask you to check yourself. And that's the beauty of the seminar today, is that it's going to be really easy for you to check how healthy you are. You don't need this machine that uh, my good friend at Sia Kanda Services allowed me to use. It's 800 Rand for this machine. And they use it for babies to test their, their temperatures and things like that. So let's, let's have a look at these five issues. If you, before I start, do you know what the difference is between an employer and an employee? Who would like to share with me the difference between an employer and an employee? Okay, I'll tell you then. The employee doesn't suffer from month end artists or month end blues. Because if you're looking forward to the end of the month, I can guarantee you you're earning a salary and you're employed. If you're not looking forward to the end of the month, you're self-employed. Because that's the stressful time of the month. So if you're suffering from month end artists or the month end blues, where I would like you to start looking at is your gross profit and your pricing. Clever businessmen will concentrate on gross profit. We were at a business yesterday. I don't know if Mike shared this with you. And the lady's gross profit was very, very low. And when your gross profit is very, very low, you can't pay your expenses. You might be able to buy the goods, but you can't pay the expenses, the rent, the water and lights, and things like that. And very often, that's a pricing issue. Are you pricing correctly? So from a month-end artist or a cash flow perspective, because that's where your problem is going to lie, I would like to have a look at these four things. Pricing evaluation, your cost of sales, your stock control, and cash sales. Okay, so let's start with pricing. Mike took uh, five minutes to share pricing with you. Very, very important. If you are not pricing correctly, ladies and gentlemen, you are not going to have the money to pay your expenses. So your gross profit must be as high as possible. Now, gross profit is calculated after what we call your cost of goods sold. So if I'm going to buy this book, and I'm going to sell it on. I don't only look at the price the book cost me. So if it cost me 10 rand, 
I've got to look at beyond the ten rand. I've got to look at things like, and this is where you need to concentrate on assessing your cost of goods sold. I've got to look at, I've imported that book. So there's transport costs from China or wherever I buy, from India or England. There is insurance on that book. There is the price of the book itself. There is storage costs involved. If I'm going to deliver that book to a customer, there's transport costs involved. It is not only the 10 rand. Okay, please, it is very, very important that you understand the total cost of goods sold. The ladies hire chairs out. And I say to them, how much did it cost you to hire the chairs? She says, well, Thane, they charged us 100 rand. And I said, well, how much did you charge the client that you've hired the chairs out to because they run a catering business? No, we charged them 100 rand. <laughs> I said, but who fetched those chairs? No, no, we fetched the chairs. So the transport cost and the fuel wasn't taken into account. And they couldn't understand why their gross profit should have been at least 50% and it was only 25%. So when you're looking at your gross profit, ladies and gentlemen, please understand it is not only the cost of the book or the product that you're selling. There are a lot, lot of periphery issues. Gross profit, when I look at a, a financial statement of a business and I look at two or three years, because you have to look at these things in a comparative sense, and the gross profit is going down, there are a couple of things that that's going to tell me. And that's going to tell me whether your business is going down from a health point of view or it's going up. The first thing that a declining gross profit is going to tell you is that your cost of goods is not correct. Okay. So when last did you check your supplier's prices? When last did you go on the internet and find out where the other suppliers are? Do you have a system to check your suppliers regularly? Okay. The other thing that a cost of goods, sorry, beg your pardon, the gross profit will tell you when it's declining is whether some, where's the accountants? What do they say when people take stuff out of your, your, your shop without paying for it? Shrinkage. Shrinkage. <laughs> the lawyers will tell you it's called theft. theft. Okay. <laughs> so a declining gross profit can be an indication of theft. So check your stock control. How are you checking whether the goods that you've bought are staying in your business without it being shrunk? Maybe you need to put a CCV camera in place. Maybe you need to have a system where you have stock inventory done on a regular basis. There's software that you can buy that does uh, stock control. But nothing will beat a physical check. The third thing that a, a shrinking gross profit will tell you is whether you're putting cash sales to the business or not. That's how easy it is to tell. If I see gross profit is going down, and I know nobody in Randburg will do this. <laughs> they, don't, they all put cash sales through the business, even though there's bank charges. Okay, so gross profit is that important. It tells you things, and you think, how on earth did the accountant know? Because there's certain systems in place.